Good morning, students. This is Anjali Divarkar. Today we are going to learn about a part of kinematics that is projectile motion, right? In a previous videos, I told you about the kinematics and that too in a about the rectilinear motion. What we are supposed to recall because it is related to a projectile, we are supposed to recall a motion of a particle is known if a position is known for all time t. then then Typically, conditions of motions are specified by the type of acceleration experienced by particle. Determination of velocity and position requires two successive integrations, right? Then three classes of motion may be defined for, if acceleration gives as a function of time, that is A is a function of time t. Similarly, if it is a function of x uh, and uh, acceleration is a function of velocity that is a is equal to f of v right then we'll start for projectile motion see a project uh, say a particle can move in a straight line then that is a rectilinear motion if a particle is following a curved path then that is a curvilinear motion if it is a freely moving in air right and we are not considering any kind of forces on it except gravity and air resistance then that kind of motion is being called as a projectile motion. This was a rough uh, definition actually I was telling. We'll move on and we'll learn precisely. So what is projectile? When a body is in a free motion, moving through air without any forces apart from gravity and air resistance, it is called a projectile. Okay? Normally, air resistance is ignored because it's a very lesser one compared to the particles movement as air resistance is a very lesser one and this kind of air resistance and all that we are going to learn in a higher classes in the second year and third year level for first year level just to make a simplicity in our analysis we are going to neglect air resistance right so only force acting on an object is the force due to gravity right this is a uniform force acting downwards right there are certain types of projectiles depending upon the inclination of the velocity. We know velocity is a tangential to the motion, right? If our motion is a straight line, then our velocity will be horizontal. If it is a curve, then curved motion or a curvilinear motion, then our velocity will be always tangent to the path, right? Similarly, there are three types of projectile depending upon the value of the angle between the initial velocity and x-axis. So if it is a theta is zero, our velocity will be horizontal, right? So horizontal projectile will be there. If theta is equal to 90 degree, then our velocity will be vertical and project vertical projectile is, is there. Then we are, uh, uh, of course, again, we are going to learn this kind of things in a higher classes. If theta is equal to say general value, between 0 to 90 degree and then that kind of a general case we are going to learn in this video also right first of all we'll learn what is horizontal horizontal projectile and then we'll have some equations related to general cases whenever see a horizontal means what your our path is like this it is following like this so our velocity will be say straight horizontal like this so horizontal projectiles are comparatively easier to understand and to work with also only formula used in the horizontal direction is x is equal to ut only. 
if a general case is there, both velocities will be there. In a horizontal direction, separate velocity will be there. In a vertical horizontal direction, separate velocity will be there. So for, uh, formula is x is equal to ut. In a vertical direction, like this, if a fall is like this, our y will be this intercept, okay? And uy will be straight away zero, okay? It's just a free fall. All the initial velocity is in the x direction only. So uy will be zero, okay? ui will be zero over here so since ui is in a free fall our a will be simply 9.81 meter per second square and our formula for s that is just to know the position is equal to ut plus half a d square as u is zero that term get vanished and the displacement is y is equal to only half gt square so we'll learn some basic formula related to a general case that is if theta is between 0 to 90 degree. In that case, our velocity will be having two components. One is a Vx that is in a horizontal direction and second one is a vertical direction. As we used to resolve a force in a two directions and the inclination, uh, if the inclination is with the horizontal, our uh, horizontal component will become cos and vertical will become sine. Similar to that, our vertical component will become sine that is V0 sine theta minus G theta will be there. And our horizontal component will become cos, that is V0 cos theta. V0 stands for initial velocity. Position, to get a position, our formula is velocity into time. Similarly, uh, whatever velocity we got in this formula, we have is used over here and we have multiplied it by time. Then equation of a path, <coughs> that is trajectory. So this is equation of path. It is a following uh, parabola. So equation of parabola we are using over here. Time maximum height, whenever uh, time is that time, if it is starting from origin and reaching to uh, maximum height, that is a time of maximum height. Time of flight is a combination of reaching from origin to maximum height and that maximum height to downward position. That is, again, it is it is reaching to ground. Uh, that a complete time is a time of flight. Two, ti two times of time of maximum height is a time of flight. Maximum height means it has started from origin and it has reached or got some height. That is the maximum height. So that this is a formula for it. That is HM is equal to initial velocity into sine theta come back at square divided by 2G. Horizontal range is starting from origin, going to upper height and coming back to ground. That is a horizontal distance is nothing but a horizontal range of a projectile. R is equal to V0 square sine 2 theta divided by G is a formula for this. To get a maximum horizontal range or a maximum horizontal distance, we are supposed to convert this value into 1. To do that, our theta should be 45. If I put that value, this will become sine 90 and ultimately I'll get a value of 1 over here. So maximum horizontal range is Rm that is equal to V0 square by G. Okay. So in this way, I have described a general case of a projectile and horizontal projectile. That's all from my side. Happy learning and thank you.